Today we're going to make the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich with ingredients available at any Walmart. I'm going to explain why you should never use pickle juice to brine your fillets, I'll tell you why I don't think they're using powdered sugar in the breading mix, and I'll reveal the secret spice Chick-fil-A uses that's missing from every recipe online. By the end of this video, I guarantee you'll be able to make this legendary sandwich at home even better than the restaurant, and you'll never again have your Sunday ruined when you're craving a heavenly fried chicken sandwich. Over the past two months, I've made around 40 different versions of the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. I've tested every recipe online, I've scoured the internet, watched every video, and read every single comment on YouTube, and I think I finally cracked the code. But before we begin, I want to address the elephant in the room, pickle juice. So let's finally lay this blasphemy to rest. Chick-fil-A does not use pickle juice to brine the fillets for their chicken sandwich. This is confirmed by hundreds of comments by current and former employees and by simply looking at the ingredient list provided by Chick-fil-A on their website. What they do use is a salt, sugar, and spice solution, or because we're dealing with Chick-fil-A, a baptismal brine made from the following godly ingredients. Water, salt, MSG, sugar, spices, more on that in a second, and paprika. Everything on their list is standard and easy to replicate, but the catch-all term spices leads us to our first problem. What spices? According to the FDA's Code of Federal Regulations, the term spice refers to any aromatic vegetable substance, except those substances which have been traditionally regarded as foods, such as onion, garlic, and celery. So that means onion powder, garlic powder, and any celery-related nonsense are out. And if we take a further look at the list of spices provided by the FDA, we can confidently exclude all those whose flavor profile doesn't match the sandwich. But how do we know the exact spices Chick-fil-A is using? After doing a bunch of testing over the course of several weeks, I felt I was getting no closer to the real thing until I stumbled across an old blog post. Apparently, the writers secured a meeting with Chick-fil-A executives and asked them directly what they meant by the term spices. According to the blog, quote, We asked Chick-fil-A what exactly is in their spices in the Chick-fil-A sandwich, and they said the spices are black pepper, paprika, and mustard, and confirmed that this is the complete list in this sandwich. And there it is, the one spice missing from every recipe online, mustard powder. According to the employees I've spoken with, the fillets come into the restaurant already pre-seasoned, so there's no way to know the exact ratios, but in my months-long research and dozens of tests, I found a 6.7% salt brine with some added sugar and spices seems to get me closest to the original flavor. But before we get into making the brine, I want to make a public service announcement about salt. If you make this brine with the wrong amount of salt, it will ruin it. Let's take a look at the two most common salts available at Walmart, Morton's Coarse Kosher Salt and Morton's Plain Table Salt. Here are the weights of one tablespoon of each. As you can see, one tablespoon of Morton's Kosher Salt weighs 14.4 grams. One tablespoon of Plain Table Salt weighs 18 grams or approximately 25% more. For this recipe, I'm using Morton's Kosher Salt, so if you have table salt, you'll need to use 25% less by volume volume, meaning teaspoons and tablespoons. To simplify this for you, I've included common salt conversions in the recipe document in the video description. But if you have a scale, just weigh out 67 grams, no matter what kind of salt you're using. To make the brine, let's start with a quarter cup plus two teaspoons of Morton's kosher salt, then add half a cup of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of MSG, and this is sold under the name Accent at Walmart. It's in the spice aisle next to the salt and is essential to achieving the true Chick-fil-A flavor. Two teaspoons of paprika, a quarter teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper, and note, this is the biggest grind of pepper. If you're using pure ground like this, which is much finer, you may want to add just a pinch. And one teaspoon of mustard powder. Now let's add one liter of water to our salt and spice mixture and stir until they've completely dissolved. And this brine will get you closer to the original Chick-fil-A flavor than anything that currently exists online. So what about the chicken? Chick-fil-A uses four ounce boneless skinless chicken breasts for their sandwiches. Apparently they use whole breasts that have not been split or cut up in any way. Now I have no idea where they source these micro birds from, or maybe they're using chicks because their name, but all the chicken breasts I can find are between 12 and 16 ounces. I don't know what sort of avian growth hormone they're giving Walmart birds, or maybe if in Texas where I'm from, we just prefer prehistoric sized chicken, but we'll have to cut ours down to get the right size. We'll start by cleaning up the breasts and removing any fat or unsightly bits. Then cut off the tenderloin and set it aside to use for chicken strips. For sandwich fillets, the best method I've found is to trim off the narrow end about halfway up the breast like this. And if it looks too small, don't worry, we'll press it out in the breading stage. Then take the thick half and split it horizontally, butterflying it and cutting it in half like this. 
If there are any thick parts of the breast, you'll want to even them out with your hand like they do at the restaurant or by lightly pounding them with a meat mallet. You want thin, uniform breasts so they cook evenly. And depending on the size of your chicken, this technique should give you about three sandwich fillets and one tenderloin per breast. After the chicken is sectioned, we'll add it to the brine. Now, you can get away with a little more or a little less, but I've consistently gotten the best results with a six to eight hour brine. And just make sure you refrigerate it the entire time. After the baptismal brine, this chicken breast will be born again and resurrected as a more delicious version of itself. Just make sure to dry well before using. And these can be made ahead of time and refrigerated until the frying step. For the breading mixture, or as Chick-fil-A calls it, the seasoned coater, many recipes online call for powdered sugar. The reason I don't think they're using powdered sugar is that it is often cut with cornstarch. And if we take a look at the restaurant's official ingredient list, we don't see cornstarch anywhere, and they would have to list it. This, coupled with the fact that the powdered version is much more expensive than granulated sugar, tells me they're almost certainly using regular sugar. Chick-fil-A also uses non-fat milk powder in their seasoned coater. This is essentially milk with all the liquid evaporated out. So we get all the benefits of milk, which will help us with browning, texture, and flavor without adding any additional liquid. And you can find this at Walmart on the baking aisle near the sugar and spices. So to make the breading mixture, let's start with two cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of granulated sugar, one and three quarter teaspoons plus one pinch of Morton's kosher salt, two teaspoons of MSG, and if you're not down with MSG, then bless your heart, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of non-fat milk powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one half teaspoon of white pepper, two teaspoons of mustard powder, and two pinches of cayenne pepper. And you'll always want to sift your seasoned coater through a sifter or strainer to prevent any clumps of flour or spices. This should make enough for about six to eight fillets from two breasts and a couple of tenderloins. After referencing the official ingredient list and testing about 40 different versions, this seasoned coating mixture gets me closer to the original Chick-fil-A sandwich flavor than anything that currently exists online. The last component we'll need is the milk wash. Chick-fil-A uses non-fat milk and eggs to make their milk wash. But since we purchased non-fat milk powder for the seasoned coater in the last step, there's no need to purchase additional skim milk. So all you'll do is make one cup of milk by reconstituting the milk powder with water by following the directions on the box. Then add two eggs per cup of milk. Whisk until the eggs and milk are thoroughly combined, and this is Chick-fil-A's milk wash. To fry the chicken, Chick-fil-A uses peanut oil. A lot of people think this gives their chicken a distinctive flavor, but in all honesty, peanut oil is flavorless like vegetable or canola oil, so really any of these will work fine. But in the interest of accuracy, today we'll be using peanut oil. You can fry the chicken in a deep fryer as I've got here, or in a heavy bottomed pot like my Dutch oven. You'll just want to use a deep fry thermometer to make sure you're maintaining temperature. So let's heat up our oil to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and set up our breading station. Here I've got the brine chicken fillets, the milk wash, and the seasoned coater. I've also got a baking sheet with a rack to put my chicken on after it's done frying. One trick to make extra crispy fillets is to take a few tablespoons of the milk wash and add it to the breading mixture. Then mix it with your hands, squeezing it between your fingers like this until it's well combined. This is called seeding and will create little beads of thickened coating mixture that will ensure our crust is extra crunchy. While the oil is coming up to temp, it's a perfect time to toast our buns. I tested several different varieties of bun at Walmart, but these brioche hamburger buns that you typically find at the front of the store were the closest I could find to Chick-fil-A's exact bun. They should have several different styles of brioche buns on their bread aisle, and they're all adequate substitutes. But in all honesty, any cheap standard hamburger bun will work just fine. You'll just want to butter both the top and bottom and lightly toast all our bread before we fry the chicken. When the oil is up to temp, let's dip our fillets in the milk wash, making sure to shake off the excess. Then press the fillet into the coating mixture. And this step is very important. Chick-fil-A actually states in their training manual that you want to press so hard your heels leave the ground. Can you imagine the calf muscles of the people who do this 8 hours a day? They're probably like totally ripped. And you want to press down on the fillet with the palm of your hand to flatten it out as much as you can and make it even without damaging the fillet. We're looking to make them as even as possible so they cook quickly. Then shake off the excess flour and into the deep fryer it goes. At Chick-fil-A, they cook their chicken for approximately 4 minutes and 20 seconds. And I don't know how long that is in metric time, but depending on the width of your fillets, it might take a bit longer. So you'll just have to test it out for yourself. When the chicken is done, remove it from the basket to the rack on your baking sheet. It's always better to put the finished fillets on a raised rack instead of paper towels because the air circulating around it ensures it stays as crispy as possible. While the chicken is cooling off, let's put the pickles on our bottom bun. 
And I tested every available brand of pickle from Walmart, and these Vlasic Ovals hamburger dill chips were the closest to the exact flavor of Chick-fil-A's pickles. They're a bit thicker than what they use, but the flavor is almost spot on. And a funny anecdote from the Chick-fil-A training manual is that the pickles should be dating, not mating. They should never be on top of one another, if you catch my drift. I see a lot of people online doing this number with their pickles. I have no idea what sort of debauchery is going on here, but it's not standard Chick-fil-A operating procedure, and it's probably not moral or ethical either. Now let's top the bottom bun with our fried chicken and crown our glorious achievement with the top bun. And this is it. I promise you, this is closer to the divine celestial flavor of the original Chick-fil-A sandwich than anyone has ever gotten before. Now let's give it a taste test and see how we did. Quickly, before our taste test, there is a school of thought that says Chick-fil-A sandwiches are simply a vehicle to consume their assortment of amazing sauces, and the one that rules them all is the original Chick-fil-A sauce. I am pleased to report the official sauce is actually available at Walmart on their condiment aisle. And if you want to save a buck or two, Walmart has its own version called Chicken Sauce that is virtually indistinguishable from the original. Alright, back to the taste test. In all honesty, it is better than the restaurant, but it's because I can focus on making one filet perfectly and I'm not pumping out 200 sandwiches an hour. So shout out to the Chick-fil-A workers because I know you all work very hard. In all other respects, it's realer than real deal Holyfield. And before any of you use the information in this video to open your own fried chicken sandwich restaurant that is only open on Sunday because you spotted a gap in the market, it would be my pleasure to leave you with a couple tips. I know frying oil can be very expensive, so if you get one of these 100 micron coffee filters or just line a strainer with cheesecloth like this, you can totally strain your frying oil and reuse it about 5 or 6 times before it starts breaking down. And secondly, if you vacuum seal your brined chicken and throw it in the freezer, it should keep for several months. This is actually the way the chicken arrives at Chick-fil-A restaurants. And if you'd like to learn how to make Gordon Ramsay's legendary beef wellington with ingredients from Walmart, be sure to check out this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Eat more chicken.